Hey guys, this is Rod, and I'm in the middle of my playthrough of Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix. I'm taking a little break today to give you guys uh, part one of a new series I'm going to create um, about streaming, and particularly how to stream with, with a minimal monetary investment. Um, I get a lot of questions a lot of the time about how I'm able to create a quality stream and the kind of tricks and things that I've found out in order to make a channel that looks at least semi-professional on the budget that I have. Now, if you notice, you know, a long time ago, I had a lot of things set up like overlays, things like that. I've kind of cut a lot of that back because it, it hindered not only the channel, you know, I felt like it hindered the screen, the gameplay, um, but it was also a little rough on my system. So if that tells you anything having overlays, but at the same time, um, I still get a lot of questions from people about how I'm able to make things look, um, you know, halfway professional with the setup that I have now guys, this is not going to be a setup on what type of computer and components to run. I trust if you're interested in streaming, that you at least have a, a halfway decent computer gaming rig. And we're also not gonna talk too much about um, computer streaming because that's a, that's a, big, <laughs> that's a big, uh, big separate issue that we might delve into later. But for right now, guys, I'm gonna talk to you about how I make my stream work on a seven-year-old system uh, and get a, a semi-quality look from it in a guide that we're going to go through week by week called How to Stream on the Cheap. So guys, to get us started, the first thing I want to talk about today is essential softwares that we can get for free or near free that are going to allow us to stream with the best quality that we can make. Now, um, what you'll see here is I have a couple different sources here, some scenes here um, that I use. Now, this is, if you notice, it's named Zelda HD up here. This has just become my like default scene for everything. Um, but this program here, guys, is called OBS. Now, if you're not familiar with OBS, OBS is like the leading... As far as I know, the leading streaming software that you can use, and a lot of people use this for Twitch, um, you know, and, and other platforms, uh, as well as creating YouTube content. Now, I use this for both myself, and if you notice here, I've got uh, my mic level, you can see it's coming up, and it picks up my voice. Now OBS is, is, it takes a lot of time to set up. We're not gonna talk about setup today, guys. That's gonna be for a very long video later on down the line. But I wanted to let you guys know, um, here's what we see when we have OBS up. Here I've got a monitor capture, so we get this cool little like endless repeating business here. You know, uh, the, the hallway effect. Um, but you can capture a monitor or I can do uh, something like this, turn this off, turn this on, and we'll see, you know, a PlayStation capture, and this is through my capture card, which we're gonna talk about in a hardware video. Okay, so OBS is an essential piece of freeware, free software that you can get. It's gonna allow you to run a stream at the best possible quality. Now there's a ton of great YouTube guides. I'm gonna try and find some and link some in the description. Uh, and hopefully that'll help you out learning how to set up OBS. Remember guys, this doesn't involve a ton of money. It involves a ton of time and research, fine tuning and doing your absolute best to make this work the best it can with your system and components. Now again, I have a very old system guys. My system was built in April, 2010. It is over seven years old at this point, at the time of making this video. Again, with the exception of the graphics card and the memory. Um, so my motherboard processor, um, my original hard drive is still in here, believe it or not. Uh, so we have, we have some old stuff we're working with, but uh, it ends up 
being something that works and lets me create YouTube content and stream live on Twitch uh, in a semi-professional way, which is really, really cool. Now, the reason I wanted to put this out is because I am planning on in the next few weeks getting a new processor motherboard and some new memory that hopefully allows me to expand this even further. But while I have this up now, I wanted to make sure I got this guide out for you to let you guys know that like it's possible to run a stream uh, if you've had a gaming computer that you built anywhere in the past seven years, right? Because that's what I'm using. Now, the other part of this, guys, is going to be that um, we have a lot of settings and things like that that we're going to have to deal with. And we'll talk about that again later Set in a setup guide, talking about setting up OVS um, with the hardware, things like that. But for right now, we're going to delve into some other tools that we use uh, to help us create not only for Twitch, but also for YouTube and things like that. Okay. Now, guys, another huge, huge, huge part of your setup needs to be your audio. And I cannot stress this enough. The best possible freeware thing that I have found to make your audio sparkle and make it sound great is going to be this voice meter banana program. Voice meter is a free program, a freeware that you can download. If you just check out voice meter in a Google search, I believe it's voicemeter.com. What you want to do is you want to get the banana version. Um, now they tell you, Oh, Hey, you're going to want to get a, you're going to want to get the extra cable bundle. Now I never paid for the cable bundle. Um, I got the one free digital audio cable or whatever it is that they include with it when you download it and I've made everything work. So it's, it's something that you can do and get this absolutely for free. Now, the biggest thing about voice meter is that it has a ton of features that you would get from like a full mixing board built into your system. And again, I'm using a very, very old processor and motherboard combo to get all my stuff done. Now what this tells us guys is that we can use this with minimal system requirements and still get a great result. If we turn this off, you'll hear this really quickly. I want to kind of just show you guys what happens when we turn this off is if I turn this off, we'll hear a difference immediately. Now you can see I have the, the main EQ off. And if I go up here, I can turn off the, Oh my goodness, that should be off. <laughs> if I go up here, I can uh, double click and turn this mix off, right? So now you kind of hear a very, very strange sound. I'll also turn off the compressor. So now you hear kind of a very hollow, thin sound. But I'm gonna bring this compressor back up about to where it was, put this about to where it was. And all of a sudden you start to hear my voice cut through and be present again. That kind of just shows you how powerful this software is, guys. Uh, the thing about it is that there's a lot of effects that you can use, not only through voice meter, but through OBS. And we'll talk again about this more in the setup video, which might, might be a two parter cause I want to make these digestible and it's going to allow us to add and control all sorts of things. So if I turn this up here, this is my kind of audio playback. So if I turn this up and down, all my desktop audio entirely goes up and down. If I turn this up and down, my mic feed goes up and down. Now people can still hear me if I turn this down, but I can't, which is kind of cool. Now I keep it up kind of low just so I can hear kind of how I sound as I'm streaming or as I'm recording, but you could turn that off if you want. Okay. But this features a, a whole load of features and, and little things that you can do effects and things like that for your voice. And it's going to let you have a lot more control over what you're putting out to your YouTube channel or to your stream. Okay. So I wanted to drop this, uh, this piece of content. I'm going to drop, um, some, some links about voice meter as well. Again, this, this requires, um, this requires a lot of time to learn how to use and mainly it's just dialing it into your voice. Once you get it dialed into your voice, everything should work great. Now guys, the last part I want to talk about today is going to be 
creating visuals and effects. Now, if you notice, I had a logo in the top right hand side of my screen in the intro of this video where we talk about or where I showed you like my actual stream and how it looks. And here's like an opening title card for one of my streams. Now, right now I'm playing through Kingdom Hearts. So I have a, a Kingdom Hearts wallpaper combined with my personal stream logo, right? So it just, you know, it's kind of a, a, a little Photoshop thing. Now I understand not everyone's gonna have a ton of money for Photoshop, guys. So this is gonna be something that I hope helps you out. So if you don't have the money for Photoshop, <laughs> much like I don't, um, Photoshop being a very high quality but very expensive program, there's a great alternative out there for people looking to create graphics for their stream as well as YouTube, and it is called GIMP. Now, GIMP is an awesome freeware. It has a lot of the same functions that Photoshop has. It lets you do a lot of cool stuff and create really cool images. Now here what I have is a template that I use for say uh, puzzle shrines in Breath of the Wild. When I'm making my Breath of the Wild YouTube puzzle shrine guides, basically I have this template that I created and saved inside of GIMP. Now this font is a, a Zelda Triforce font and you can get that from Duff Fonts. If you ever need any fonts, I recommend Duff Fonts. Uh, free font site really great, but this got me the Zelda Triforce font um, I've saved this There's some effects on this this right here You know that kind of make it an outline um, But what we can do is we can just take this and now that we have this template We can take and add a title well, Let's see here if I can get this font to actually come up <laughs> for you guys Cool, and then we can resize it just like Photoshop. Boom, and this is a 1920 by 1080 image that we're turning into a thumbnail. So the biggest thing we're gonna wanna do is make this like, I don't know, 180, right? Select the color. I usually use a very bright color for this to contrast all this blue. I usually use like this pink right here. And I might go, oop. Streaming on the cheap, right? Um, and I can add that in. You can add a lot of cool effects. Again, we'll talk a little more about this later. But say I want to add a drop shadow. Boom. I always usually use 80 or more. And boom. Look at that. Makes it pop right out. Gives it a little depth. So, GIMP is a great alternative if you're running a low budget channel. If you're just starting out, you don't want to put a ton of monetary investment into a stream without knowing what exactly you're going to be able to do. So this is something that's going to help you create. And this is also excellent for creating YouTube thumbnails, guys. If you, any of you want to get into the YouTube game, I use this for all of my thumbnails on YouTube. It works very similar to Photoshop. It is a little more limited, but again, it's free. So you can't really complain that it's a little more limited than Photoshop. But hopefully, you're able to learn how to use this. Again, I'll drop some links in the description on where you can get these and some, some cool guides that I've found. Biggest thing, guys, again, is while you may not have to put in a huge monetary investment, you're going to want to put in a lot of time in learning how to use this. I'm not super advanced with this uh, program, even though I use it a lot. I can get things done with it very, very quickly, uh, thanks to a lot of practice, but I don't know how to do any of the super fancy stuff. But I'm definitely working on learning it to make to make better, you know, uh, better thumbnails, better title cards for my stream, better graphics for my streams, things like that. So you definitely want to check this program out. It is excellent for the for the cost. You know, it's it's the best alternative to Photoshop that I've found for free. So yeah, definitely make sure to check out GIMP. This is version 2.8. I believe that's the newest version, if I'm not mistaken. But I've had it for a while, so you might want to look into that. And hopefully, uh, you know, you guys get as much use out of this as I have because this is an excellent, excellent program that you can do a lot of stuff with. So guys... That's it right now for the freeware software that you can use to create a better stream and better content for your viewers. Now, the biggest thing we want to understand about streaming, guys, is while you may have the most professional stream 
or professional looking stream in the game uh streaming is a big part a big part personality you know some of the best streamers i've seen are guys who started with like no face cam no uh no real mic or anything like that for a long time before they they ended up getting you know proper equipment and a proper setup now what i use is a green screen guys we're going to talk about hardware as well as other outside effects that you can use uh, later in the setup portion and the hardware portion but right now these are three awesome softwares that you can use to create graphics for your stream to create um a good image which you see me getting this with obs and then good audio quality especially for your voice which i'm getting through that voice meter banana program now we want to make sure guys that that we do uh, always take into account system load we will talk about that in the setup uh because right now just general youtube recording i run about 60 to 65 percent on my cpu uh when i'm streaming it gets up to 80 or 85 now that's a very high load and i run that for several hours but my computer is, has been a champ about it and again my system is seven years old so that's that's a <laughs> that's no small feat for it to run as well as it does so guys again i want to thank you for stopping by today and i'm rod and i hope to see you soon for more of this guide about streaming on the cheap thanks guys